How's it going, guys? We've got something kind of special. We are up in Idaho right now with Buck Knives, obviously, and uh, it just so happened that Dr. Laren Thomas, which if you don't know, is the creator of Magna Cut, and I'm just gonna say the preemptive expert on knife steels. Thank you. Does that feel fair? <laughs> <laughs> He's written a couple books. He runs an amazing website called Knife Steel Nerds, and we just couldn't be here without sitting down and talking something knife steel related. I went ahead and asked him the stupid question of what are the three best knife steels? A lot of knife enthusiasts end up comparing knives within a specific category. Right. You know, they're comparing like S30V and M390, and there are little differences between them, but it's really like comparing the Honda Civic to the Toyota Corolla. Like they're the same type of product and debating them like, yes, there are pros and cons, but there's not huge differences right. between these steels. It's not like a Lamborghini and a Toyota or whatever. Right? Yeah. Like where you're gonna see markable categorical differences. Yeah, because some steels are, are like a, a Hummer and some are like a Lamborghini or yeah. maybe even a Formula One racer. I like to talk about steels in categories. You know, if you wanna try a new steel, you'll see bigger differences if you move to a different category as opposed to just moving to a new flavor of the same category. Got you. Categories we can talk about would be like high toughness, a balanced steel, and a high wear resistance steel. So if we stick with stainless steels, high toughness would be things like AEBL and 14C28N. So those are made in Sweden. Originally they were developed for razors. So they made them to have super fine microstructures so that they could take really sharp edges for shaving. Right. Because, you know, straight razors, they have to be super sharp or you're going to be very uncomfortable. Yeah, under a microscope, you don't want a bunch of jagged edges there, right? Right. Because and so, it'll tear your face up. So the edges are so thin and so sharp that you need a really fine microstructure. So that gives those steels really good toughness and really fine edges. You can actually use them for a wide range of things. You, you can use a tough steel in a chopper and you can also use it in a razor. You're probably gonna heat treat them differently. You know, you'll go a little lower hardness for the chopper and higher hardness because you just need that strength for right. a really thin edge or it'll be rolling. So that's a high toughness steel. 14C28N has most of the properties of AEBL, but they use nitrogen and modified the rest of the composition. So they got a little more corrosion resistance. So okay. in many ways, 14C28N is an upgrade on the older AEBL and 13C26. Just like the balance steels, they can be used in a wide range of applications, really depending on the edge geometry and the heat treatment. Right. Now a high wear resistance steel, not as versatile. Surprisingly, even though it's high in the toughness category and not very high in wear resistance, you know, if you've got a really thin edge and it's a high hardness heat treatment, you can get some really good cutting out of those knives. Some people even prefer those because you can strop them back really easy. They can work great. So I'm a fan of those steels. I have been for years. Some of the earliest stuff I ever wrote was for my dad's website about AEBL because at the time people looked at the composition and they said, oh, this is just like 440A, which is a really old school steel, which has been used in factory knives for decades. Yeah, forever. And at this point, its reputation isn't very good. So people would say, oh, AEBL, that's garbage. It's got the same carbon content as 440A. But its design is different. And these Swedish companies, you know, they got that processing optimized for razors. And so it's just worlds apart, you know, really high toughness, really fine microstructure. So those are my favorite steels in the high toughness category. So moving into balanced, so I used to recommend CPM 154 and S35VN. So those are powder metallurgy stainless steels and they've got good balanced properties. Uh, but I developed MagnaCut and now I recommend that in the balanced category. And of course I've been called, uh, you know, biased right. for recommending this, right. but so sue me, I, I believe in my own product, you know, so. I don't think there's anything wrong with it and I, and I would say that you, like I said at the beginning, and it really is no hype. I, I really think that you are the expert right now doing the work in the knife world, showing what this has done. And you've been doing that for years before you developed your own. So I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that you understood the proof in the pudding, right? And then you were able to create a new flavor that was able to take some of your favorite elements, right? And there's like, if a chef comes up with a new dish based around a classic dish, and he says, I think this is the best dish, I think that the dish is at least worth trying. And I think that the industry is agreeing with MagnaCut. 
Right. Well, and I, I use a range of standardized tests so that I can compare steels without bias. Yeah. So, you know, in some categories, I hoped it would do a little better than it ended up doing. And in others, like corrosion resistance especially, I was shooting for a 7 or 8 out of 10, and instead I hit 9 or 10 out of 10. And uh, I wouldn't have known that without having an unbiased test. So sometimes people tell me that I'm rating my steel too low. Yeah. You know, the initial tests on MagnaCut have been great across the industry, and I'm like, well, I think... I, I think it sits around there, you know, cool. so I'm not gonna say it's anything that it isn't. I love it. So MagnaCut has got great balance properties. It can be heat treated hard as high as 64 or 65 if you're heat treating it in small batches for a custom knife maker. Or you can go softer for more toughness. Uh, it just depends on what you're looking for. You know, it can go to pretty large knives. I've seen guys making competition choppers out of it, which, you know, are big, beefy knives. That have to take a lot of abuse and hold a really sharp edge for that competition stuff. Yeah. yeah. All the way to very thin kitchen knives, and it seems to do well across the, the different types of applications. So MagnaCut has been doing great. You know, I'm very proud of it. It's been awesome. Now, you had two steels in that balance category. Mm -hmm. Do you think that MagnaCut just fills the category, or do you think there's another steel in there that you would... CPM 154 still has a place, especially for custom knives. Okay. The reason being that MagnaCut, S30V, S35VN, they all have vanadium and niobium carbides in them which you'd say, what does that have to do with anything? It's exactly. But, uh, <laughs> they are higher in hardness, those hard particles in the steel, mm -hmm. than conventional abrasives. So if you buy typical sandpaper, it has a difficult time getting a great finish on these steels. So those carbides, they improve the properties of the steel. You get a better toughness, wear resistance balance, but you've made something that's more difficult to finish by hand. And so custom knife makers often send me messages like, you know, how do you finish this stuff? And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, there, there's yeah. no uh, easy answer. There's some tips and tricks out there, but it's not going to be as easy. And that's just the trade-off. So, yeah. you know, everything's a trade-off. Well, I know even here at Buck, they've developed some stuff in MagnaCut. They've got some interesting stuff coming, one of the reasons that we're here. And even talking with these guys a few months ago when we were here, they were mentioning, they're like, yeah, MagnaCut, like it took us a second to figure out how to, you know, tool this thing or how to finish this thing. or So even a big company is, there's a learning curve, right? Some knife companies will have a whole bunch of steels since we're at Buck. We won't mention them by name, right. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so some companies are known for using a lot of different steels. And uh, as a customer, you're just like, okay, great. I've got a lot of options, yeah. but they have to make little logistical changes for every single one of those steels. Yep. Uh, they can't just put the same steel into the same process and it comes out exactly the same. Yeah. So it's not that this or that steel is unproven or whatever, but you've just got to work out the logistical kinks in the process uh, for every model, yeah, basically. For every steel you're using. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't blame any companies for being like, we're just going to use 154CM and we're going to keep using it. Yeah. Uh, because as long as they're still selling, then that saves you money. Yeah. You know? So it costs these companies money to offer you this variety. Yep. So. For sure. Moving into our third category then. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so high wear resistance, that gives you high edge retention, especially with slicing. So the lower your wear resistance, the easier it is for that edge to wear and it gets duller and duller. You know, if you think about a perfect triangle, that becomes rounder and rounder as it abrades away. You can also lose an edge due to chipping or to rolling. Those are other mechanisms. But if you've got the appropriate geometry for the type of cutting that you're doing, you really should be losing your edge to wear. If you're losing your edge to chipping or rolling, you need to go more obtuse on your angle. Right, and this is a huge consideration, not just considering steels, right, mm -hmm. you're using, but the way that an edge is finished and the grind that's on a knife are like really important to the performance of particular steels in particular situations. Too, yeah. right? So edge geometry is actually more important than steel and it's more important than heat treating. Edge geometry is actually more important than steel and it's more important than heat treating. So if you want to increase the performance of your knife, just sharpen it differently. Cool. So take it to a more acute angle and just start cutting stuff. Yeah. And then if you get a roll or a chip the way that you're using this knife, then back off a little bit. A lot of knife enthusiasts don't understand the ability that they have to improve the performance of their own knife. I and work all day yeah. every day at optimizing steel choice and heat treatment and I will admit the edge geometry matters than both of those things. I love it. <laughs> but obviously we want to optimize all three. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have optimization in all three, you're going to have the best performing tool, right? Yeah. Which brings us to... Yeah, so we'll finally get to the high edge retention steels. S90V and S110V. So they are also powder metallurgy steels. They're high in vanadium 
and all of those vanadium carbides give it really high wear resistance. S110V has better corrosion resistance than S90V, but it has a little bit worse toughness than S90V. Okay. So those are my two favorites in that category. And so, yeah, just that really high vanadium content gives them really excellent wear resistance. Well, not only has this been fun to kind of just dive into a world that I kind of understand. I mean, I, I read your book at whatever comprehension I can. I'm not an engineer, right? I've enjoyed the website for years, um, but I also just love hearing your opinions and I love hearing this edge philosophy or this edge reality that you're talking about as well. I think it's amazing. Yeah, you can read more in my book. We'll plug the book now. Knife engineering. So knife engineering, there are whole chapters about edge geometry where I show the effect of edge geometry. For example, CPM 154, I mentioned it being in the balanced category. But if you just go 10 degrees more acute, I forget the exact number. You'll have to look in the book. Yeah. It'll outcut S90V. Uh, you know, 10 degrees more obtuse. That's how big of a difference it can make. I also did some edge impact tests where I did 15 degrees per side and 25 degrees per side, I think. With the 15 degrees per side, it was amazing. You would let go of this rod and it would impact and it would just give it a little tink. And then you look at the, the knife and it's just wrecked. You know, there's a big old chip out right, of it. Right. Uh, which as an, another aside, uh, when you're pressing into something like you're cutting a hard material like hard wood or brass, uh, it's a pretty slow uh, application of stress. Mm -hmm. But if you do an impact, the behavior changes. So this is why you can see amazing tests on YouTube where they're cutting really hard stuff and you're like, wow, this steel isn't even that tough and it's doing this amazing cutting. Right. But if you gave it a little tap, then it would be really bad. Right. Uh, but with 25 degrees, you know, I would have to like set the arm all the way up. It was a pendulum. Yeah. And then it would whack it and then we'd get like a little ripple in the edge. So uh, both in the area of rolling, chipping, and also cutting, you know, this is a major balance. So I love it. So go read Knife Engineering if you want to learn more. About I love it. it. All of this knife steel nerd stuff that Laren's been doing is not his day-to-day -day job. He is a steel scientist. That's what he does. So when we're talking about testing and stuff, this isn't self-convoluted testing. This is coming from why we call him doctor. <laughs> from a PhD and from working in the industries that uh, that he works in with steel, so which is amazing. Yeah, so I have a PhD in metallurgical engineering. I did my PhD thesis on steel, and I work for a steel research facility developing new steels for automotive. So uh, I've got all of the credentials yes. that, <laughs> that you need. Yeah. So. I, I feel completely confident saying expert. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, well, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. And guys, thank you so much for tuning into this. I hope you learned something. I know I have, and I'm super stoked. I've I've enjoyed the first book. I haven't I haven't read the second book yet, but I've enjoyed the first book. I'm enjoying the website. Make sure to check them out. Links in the description. Catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>